Major League Soccer in the U.S. seems to be growing in popularity. Did you know that Albuquerque has been the home of a semi-professional soccer team for the past five years? Albuquerque Seoul FC is a member of the PDL, or Premier Development League. The league has 78 teams in the U.S. and Canada. The Albuquerque team is trying to make a name for themselves, especially locally. Our correspondent, Khalil Ecolona, sat down this week with the president, head coach, and a player from the team to learn more about the team and their upcoming season. I'm joined at the table by Larry Espinoza, president of Albuquerque Soul FC, head coach Justin Sells, and player Pat Pacheco. So Larry, let me start with you. Albuquerque Soul was formed in 2013, so how has the team evolved since then? Uh, it's evolved quite a bit, actually, um, from two guys having a dream of wanting to start higher level soccer and not knowing how to, to, to run a franchise to um, being one of the leaders in the league um, from the business standpoint. We, uh, we raised the, the, the largest amount of partnerships um, last year. We finished top 10 in attendance and um, we believe that we put on a good organization. Um, we, we have probably close to about 100, 125 resumes that come in every year of guys wanting to come play here. Wow. And that we believe that's because we figured out how to treat players. Okay. Players are our product, um, you know, if, to put it in simple business terms. So how do you keep your product healthy, performing, um, entertained, uh, frankly? So okay. we're, we're excited. We're excited. We feel like we've, we've, we've come a long way. Yeah, you're putting a good product out on the field. We, we believe so. Um, uh, we've had, a, we've had some, some issues um, with orchestrating that product, um, hence why we have a new coach. And we're excited for this season. Okay. Um, so. Okay, so speaking of, your, what's the ultimate goal for the team? Um, you know, we've had a, we've had a, a five-year and a ten-year plan. Five years to uh, get to the professional ranks, which would, would be second division soccer across the country. And then the eventual goal would be um, to have an MLS team here. But um, don't really know that Albuquerque has the economic base to sustain a, uh, an MLS franchise quite yet. And the, the MLS is the um, Major League Soccer franchise Correct. that a Correct. lot of people are familiar with they see on some of the major broadcast networks. Correct. So let me ask you, a lot of young people in this town play soccer, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of soccer fans. What do you plan to do? What's the plan to get people in the seats for the games? Put, put, on, exciting, in, put on an exciting show. You know, you, you, you have something equivalent to, you know, our biggest competition we feel is the movies. Mm. Um, you know, so come spend some time outdoors. Come see what something local. Um, the majority of our team this year, we have, we have a big roster. We have 36 players. Mm. And I'd say 22, 24 of them are local guys. Okay. So, um, you know, we're putting on a, a, a local show. Come check it out. You know, we have good concessions. We have great merchandise. And you're out in the fresh air in the sun. So Ent it's a lot of fun. Entertaining time for the family. Absolutely. If you've never seen a live soccer game, you've seen it on TV, maybe been a little bit curious, we want you. We want you to come check it out because our success rate of converting you to come to more games is about 96%. Okay. So. Okay. I like that. So, Pat, let me ask you, yeah. how did you get started playing soccer? Well, let's see. I started... When I was up in Taos, I lived in Albuquerque, moved to Taos, and fortunately I ran into a guy named Michael Hensley, and he was running a, a soccer league up there and running practices. I was about 10 years old, and uh, he invited me out. He knew my father from playing high school sports with him, and basically from then on, it, it was the story was written. Um, I enjoyed it. I, I was pretty fast, so from then on, I was like, well, if I can run around and kick the ball, I, I enjoyed it, and you know, I showed a lot of interest in it, so I think my parents just kept me in it, and from then on, it just kept growing. I stuck with it and started traveling to Albuquerque and playing club soccer, and from then on, it just another level to another level, and now I find myself here. How long have you been with the Soul? Uh, this will be my fifth year, actually. I've been with the Soul since it first originally started. Okay. I, I think I'm one of two players, um, so it's it's been a long journey but I've seen it from the beginning until now and I'm excited for this year it's gonna be an awesome an awesome season it looks like a good season yes on it tap. does now, now Justin let me ask you he was mentioning earlier about having people come out to support the games where will the soul be playing their home games this year we'll be playing a mix uh, most of our games at St. Pius High School and then we have I believe three games at UNM 
Okay. I play at University of New Mexico soccer in track stadium. So. But what, why not play all the games at UNM? Um, I don't know. Larry probably has a better answer uh, than that's I great, can come up. But that's a great question. You know, we we've been fairly diligent in in wanting to play more games there. Um, unfortunately, that from a bandwidth standpoint, uh, my understanding on their end, mm -hmm. that's about. That's about all we can get is three. Okay. So. Okay, but possibly in the future there could be something set up for more. Yeah, we we we, we hope so. Um, you know, we've been we've been very um, proactive in trying to help them get the word out about keeping Lobo soccer, mm -hmm. um, and we believe that we could contribute financially um, because. We, we do pay rent any time that we play over there yeah. um, to help. It's not a lot of money, but it's some that, you know, a little bit starts chipping away at that deficit. We believe we could help. Okay. Okay. So what is the plan to get people into the seats? I think, I mean, for me, you know, coming in as my first, first year as coach, it's really trying to get, put a really exciting team together on the field and getting results. I think the main driver of, getting people to show up, whether it be to Pius or to UNM, to watch his play is by winning games. You know, last year was, you know, I was a fan of the soul last year and, you know, took my wife and my kids out in some of the games. And I think the, the best way to get people involved and excited about our community and our soccer communities, we, we need to get results. We got to put a good team on the field. and. I'm excited about the quality we have on the team this year. Okay, I like that. So the first game is coming up. It's on May 12th against Tucson FC. Yes. You guys ready to win that game? Yeah, I think we are. It's, I mean, they're obviously our rivals. They're, they're right next door. We've, we've had a good game against them probably the past three, four seasons now. Um, and that being said, you know, they've gotten the better of us, especially at their home place okay. most of the time. So I think going there the first game of the season really is going to set the tone for the rest of it. So I think we all want to be there and be ready to go because starting the season on the right foot is the most important. And getting some revenge on the yeah, team. Yeah, exactly. Winning on their turf uh -huh. always helps out. <laughs> now, Justin, let me, let me ask you. So the team is currently a part of the Premier Development League, mm -hmm. and that's not necessarily recognized by the United States Fo Soccer Federation. What are the plans to become recognized by the Federation? Um, I don't know. I think, you know, I look at the team with, with the group of players we have, and I think there's, you know, there's MLS, there's USL, PDL is kind of that third tier level. You know, as a personnel, what we have on our group right now, you know, we've been training 20, 25 guys the last couple months, mm -hmm. three, four days a week. And I think there's a handful of guys on, on the group, local guys that have been training right now that are USL potential players. Okay. Um, you know, if we're fortunate enough to have a USL team next year. I think there's a handful of guys that really have a shot of so, hopefully making that group. So is that is that talent gap between the MLS, USL, and PDL very large? Um, I think between PDL and MLS, it's it's there's a good dis the gap is pretty good. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of the guys that are at PDL level are college players. They're a little bit younger not quite as mature, um, but that doesn't say those guys can't, can't make that jump yeah. over time. You know, I think the PDL serves a great purpose. Is it's, a, it's what it is, is a developmental league. You know, we're trying to improve these players. So hopefully once they finish, you know, two or four years of college, they're ready to make that jump and hopefully get drafted to go to MLS franchises, you know, yeah. or USL teams. I understand. I understand. So, Larry, let me ask you, in other cities with other sports, teams go to the cities and they call for taxpayers and city officials to really help with building stadiums and facilities. Is that the plan for the Seoul? Um, that part hasn't quite been sorted out. It's been definitely put on, on as an option. Okay. Um, we, we feel... For the last two and a half years, we put together a um, stadium advisory group um, mixed of public officials, um, attorneys, accountants, architects, uh, you name it. It's a, there's a wide variety of professionals in the group to sit and help us figure out what's going to be the 
best possible way to get something done. Okay. Um, what are what are we looking at? Do we start with a, a pop up stadium like Phoenix did? You know, Phoenix built a pop up stadium in 53 days at 7.5 million. Now, what they're planning on building next is in the 200 million. You know, and they have someone backing it by the name of Neiman Marcus. Um, Which helps. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, again, Albuquerque doesn't necessarily have that. Um, are, are private investors possibly involved? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We've reached out to a few and we believe that uh, we've created some good momentum with that. Um, you know, we've put it, you know, M Mayor Barry was, was a, a champion behind it and, you know, Mayor Keller has gotten behind it and he said, you know, we love the idea. We, we believe that it could help the city economically. Um, our, we had an, an economic impact study done and it'll bring about 42 million over four years in in tourism dollars to downtown proper. Yeah, that's nice. So, that, that helps out. Because so, some say that Albuquerque is a basketball town. And do you think that with the emergence of the soul, briefly, because we don't have much time left, do you think that with the emergence of the soul, it could attract possibly an NBA franchise, uh, a, a full NFL franchise? Uh, it could. You know, we're, we're big proponents of of co-opetition, not competition. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we love the gladiators, we love the isotopes. You know, people going out to those events, they're more likely to come check us out yeah. if they have a good time at those others. Okay, so. okay, so the plan is to go out there to win, to win the cup this season. Yeah. I love it, I love it. Mm -hmm. I wanna thank yeah. all of you gentlemen for being with me today. Go Soul, good luck to you on the season. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.